so let's start right here at the top with you. You're, you're a professor, you're, a, you're an expert in the basics of understanding the physiology and the metabolism underlying diabetes. So can you tell us what's the difference between insulin deficiency and insulin resistance? So my general theme is that if you understand what's going on biologically, it makes it so much easier to take care of yourself to either make existing diabetes better or to prevent it. And so the two principles that I like to, the main principle I like to teach really relates to two things that interact. And we tend to separate them when in fact they're profoundly interactive. And one is, if you look at the figure over here, one is called, uh, is typically thought of as insulin resistance, which is in the tissues, muscle, liver, fat. Another is called insulin deficiency, which is the beta cell, the pancreas. And, and in this figure, what it shows here is that the two are constantly interplaying. If you're a type one diabetic, even though everybody says you're insulin deficient, you, every type one diabetic, with almost with two exceptions, is also insulin resistant. And I'll explain why. And every type two diabetic, even though we think about it as a disease of overweight, sedentary lifestyle, insulin resistance, every type two diabetic, almost by definition, is insulin deficient. And not only that, the each makes the other one worse. So the point of this is gonna be, the take home message, if there's one take home message, is that you have a, what's called a, a positive feedback. Each one makes the other worse, so you can spiral downwards, that's the bad news, people can get worse and they never really understood why, or you can spiral upwards, sort of it's a healing system. And if you understand that, you can understand how little things can make you much better. So bi-directional interaction, positive feedback loop between beta cell, pancreas, and the tissues, which is insulin resistance. Now let me just start by giving a couple of simple examples that people with, who live with diabetes or who have family with diabetes or who take care of diabetics who might already have a uh, familiarity with, and then we'll go into more detail. And I always like to keep this an example because I think the human biology is, is easy to remember and informs us about the truth of what's going on in the underlying physiology. Here's a uh, perfect example. If someone comes in, if anybody know anybody who's come in with a type 1 diabetes and DKA, ketoacidosis, or in, in a type 2 diabetes with severe hyperosmolar state, profoundly high glucose, very high glucose. If, you, if your doctor will give them sometimes 10 units an hour of insulin in the first day, why is that? That the normal, we'll see, the normal dose of insulin is maybe one unit an hour, one and a half units an hour. So why do you need 10 units an hour to lower the sugar? And some of it is because of stress, but most of it is because if you come in that with that bad of sugar, it means your tissues haven't seen insulin. So they're very resistant to insulin. So what happens is initially you need 200 units, 150 units a day. But by day three, if a doctor were to give you that same dose, they'd put you into a coma. Because seeing insulin for two days makes the tissues more sensitive to insulin. So that's the most dramatic example. Here's another example. Um, everybody, and I'll, I'll go into this in more detail in a minute, but this is just to set the stage. If, you, if you're a type two diabetic and you start on a medicine like uh, tolbutamide or glipizide or something like that, libuide, um, insulin, the first three days, the insulin goes up and the glucose goes down because that's what sulfonylureas do. They make the pancreas secrete more insulin. But by day 30, the insulin is down to normal and the glucose is, to, is normal. So that's by definition, improved insulin sensitivity. Lower glucose, same insulin. But sulfonylureas don't do anything to tissues. We know that if you test them against every tissue, they have a tiny effect on let's say the on adipose, but really nothing to, to, to really make this worth uh, mentioning. So what are they doing? They're by acting, by making the beta cell work better, they're making the tish, tissues more sensitive. So everybody who's on a soft nerve has better insulin sensitivity, at least at the beginning. And here's another example. Uh, and this, is, oh, this will be the last one I'll say now, and then we'll go into more details. There are some people who bring uh, to very difficult type two diabetics usually into the hospital into like on a Sunday. And they have nurses there and they just crank them full of insulin and glucose for eight hours. Why do they do that? And the answer is they give them the insulin to sensitize the tissues to insulin and to give the beta cell a rest, we'll get to that in a minute, 
and they give the glucose so they don't go into hypoglycemia. So this has always seemed like a caricature of American medicine. You can't take care of yourself right with diet and exercise. So you come to the hospital one day a week. I mean, how ridiculous. But it kind of works. <laughs> it works for four or five days. Because just seeing that insulin makes the tissues more sensitive. And just resting the pancreas, as we'll see, makes the pancreas work better. So what you're saying then is in a situation where uh, a person is truly insulin deficient, whether they have type 1 diabetes or type 2 diabetes, it goes on for some period of time, at which point to bring your glucose down, you have to inject large amounts of insulin and then the tissues become sensitized to it. And then the amount of insulin you have to inject goes lower and lower and lower. Exactly. In fact, and if you think about it even deeper, we'll talk about that over the next hour. Um, anything you do that makes the tissues more uh, sensitive, well, more, it gives the tissues more exposure to insulin, will make them more sensitive to insulin. It seems like a paradox, but it's very common in endocrine systems, actually. If, if someone, for example, um, runs out of glucocorticoids, runs out of, let's say, thyroid, uh, thyroid hormone, their, um, their tissues become uh, less sensitive to thyroid hormone until you give it to them. Or, or more specifically, if your thyroid gland doesn't have TSH, you have to give TSH for a couple of days before response, or even with your, your adrenal gland. This is maybe a little technical for everyone, but if your adrenal gland is, is worn out because your pituitary isn't making the hormone that feeds it, it takes two days of giving that hormone before the adrenal gland can respond to that hormone. It's very common in endocrine systems that the factor that acts on the, on the tissue is also what's trophic, makes the tissue, primes it for itself. So insulin primes tissues for itself. If a person is just being diagnosed as a type one diabetic, so yeah. ah, something, something has happened where their pancreas has been damaged, they're not producing enough insulin to keep their blood glucose in range. So in that case, they then go to the hospital, yes. the hospital d diagnoses them, starts injecting insulin. How in that situation, how would you, why is the type one classified as insulin resistant deficient okay but they weren't insulin resistant because it was they didn't they just didn't have it that wasn't it wasn't insulin resistance that was the problem there it was the fact that they just didn't have any okay let me this is, a, this is really a brilliant question because it is a, the best example in the whole world is what i didn't give and i was gonna get to it in a minute is the honeymoon i know cyrus you're gonna ask me about the honeymoon effect honeymoon is not when you're, you're spending time with your sweetheart no no honeymoon effect is in diabetes is when you first get diagnosed often let's say it's a 12 year old kid or something, young person. And, and they come in and they're just what you said. They're in very severe metabolic danger. Their tissues, their, their beta cell is, is burned out, it looks like. Tissues are resistant to insulin, so their sugar is very high, they could, be, they could almost die. So then you give them insulin for a week, a month. Then you give them less insulin, because insulin makes insulin work better. And then you suddenly, you're on five units a day, and then you have no insulin. This is called the honeymoon effect. And the, pa the parents are like, oh my God, I'm cured. The kid, my, my son is, my daughter's cured. And you have to tell them, no, probably not. This is a honeymoon. <laughs> That's like a bad joke about honeymoons. It's gonna get worse. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. No. So, um, no, but the, uh, the honeymoon effect is that this, the, so temporarily, and, uh, and here, so I'll show you, a, let's look at the figure here on the black one, the whiteboard. So here's insulin creeping down over time because of the disease, going down like this, and then it gets below the threshold on the figure where you go into uh, ketoacidosis uh, as the beta cell uh, burns out. And then you give them insulin and the beta cell starts to recover. And the tissues start to, and the tissue, because the beta cell is being rested, and we'll talk about that in a minute. The tissues are also more sensitive. So now, even if the pancreas is only making 10% of what it should, 20%, it can barely squeak by. And the reason it's a honeymoon and not forever is that the disease typically will get will progress. So the beta cell will actually start to continue to, to be damaged by antibodies and things over the next six months. And then it's permanent diabetes. So the point is there's a temporary phase where the beta cell really could have made it, except for the fact you were in this cycle of, in, of, in, of inadequate insulin and insulin resistance. And so, that, so as to answer your question, um, giving insulin to a brand new diabetic can, can dramatically reduce 
they're uh, initially give insulin and then over time you can dramatically reduce their insulin needs just by doing it right. 